Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. In this episode, we're talking about village life in American Samoa. Kenisa talks with the mayor of Amuli Village about Samoan village traditions. And we attend a village meeting where climate change and fishing pressures are changing how locals manage their resources. In American Samoa, the traditional village system is intact. Only Samoans can own land, and each village is governed by village chiefs. We journey to Amoli, a remote, pristine village on the eastern end of Tutuila Island. Amoli Village maintains a high degree of cultural practices, like the Fa'a Samoa, which guides their way of life from family relationships to governance. This is the village of Amul. And you're the mayor here? I am the mayor, yes. What does that mean? Mayor? Yeah. Well, it's just like a, a guardian of the village, like the protector of the village. Mm-hmm. And just make sure that everything is um, perfect. I'm the one that always walk in the village, make sure you know everything is clean. Everything is in order. Mm-hmm. Make sure you know people obey the, the village curfew because we have curfew every evening. At what time? At six thirty. Oh wow! And then we have one at night at nine thirty for the for the kids, school kids. Uh huh. Because yeah, when the if the bell ring at nine thirty, I mean all the kids that go to school has got to go to bed. Time for bed, then go to school the next morning. I see. And uh, you know. I'm the one who represents the village in the in the government. If they have the have if the government wants something from the village, they always approach me first, uh-huh. come to me first, then I go to the village. How long have you been the mayor? In my fifth year, because every two years, the village uh, council they have a meeting decided to see if, if they want. Because every two years the, the mayor change in every village. Oh. So if they want, if decided to you know to let me. Uh, Continue the, the job, then. That's why I'm. This is my fifth year. Fifth year. Did you think when you were growing up that you would become yeah, the mayor? Yes. yes. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I was born in this village. I was raised in this village, and now I'm 53 years old, and I'm I'm still in this village. So, I'm because the only the only the only time you become a mayor if you are Matai. What does that mean? That means he's a talking chief. A talking chief. Yeah. So if you're not a talking chief, you you don't have, you don't, you're out of the question. Why do they call it a talking chief? And the word talking, what does that mean? Uh, talking is the, the village council. They have all these chiefs in mm-hmm. the village council. Consists of high chief and talking chiefs, and chiefs. Uh huh. So the talking chiefs is either, they're the one who are, uh, talk first, whatever. Uh, presentation of village are doing whatever meeting, they are the first one to talk. Well, they are not a little time to proclaim a such thing to have to love a noia for a team of a fellow, it's a four lot to buy. So, you kind of communicate from the people to the government and back to the to people, the, yes. And how many people are in your village? Around um, four or something, oh. include kids, women, and men, four or something. People. Pretty big. It's a big village, yeah. And each village has its own high chief and talking chief and chief. Right, right, right. And today in Amoli, you're having a special meeting of talking chiefs? Not today. We always have meeting like every other, um, after the first Sunday of the month, then we have the second Sunday. That's when we have our meeting. So what is the meeting today then? Well, it discuss, because, uh, 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 about three weeks ago, there was a problem in our village. Some kids, because uh, in this village we have we have a, a, a very strict curfew. Uh-huh. No yelling in the village, no fighting, no stealing, everything like that. So about three weeks ago, there was a couple of kids in the village. They were swearing and yelling in the village. So we had a meeting today, and then and the village decided to uh, punish them in the village way. Uh-huh. So the village council decided to find them like four cases of chicken, 
Yeah, four cases of chicken, and they have to feed the, the village council. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Welcome back to Voice of the Sea. How do people in your village feel about um, climate change issues? How is it affecting Amoli? Well, one thing for sure is it's affecting my village. If I look around, long time ago, this village used to be beautiful, a lot of sand. And if you go down to, down the ocean, it's nothing but rocks on the other. It used to be a lot of sand, now it's rocks. Uh -huh. So that tells you this is changing. And plus the stream, when it rains a lot, it's a mess. So the, my village understand, that's why we're having this meeting. We understand the impact of the climate change in not only my village, but any village. So whatever, because whatever happened to my village is going to happen to another village. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important for my village and the people in my village to understand what's going on. Right now, the, even, the, even the ocean, the fish and everything, they're declining right now. Not, not like a long time ago. There's a lot of fish. Right now, we do hardly have any fish. The fish are declining because uh, I think one thing is it's a climate change. The, the, the coral reef, mm -hmm. some of the coral reef, the coral are dead. Uh -huh. yeah, because of the, the, street, the water from the stream, this brown water, when it rains, a lot of brown water covers the whole ocean, the whole front of the ocean. And I think that's one of the problems. How is your village talking about dealing with sea level rise? Yeah, right now we, uh, we everybody know understand uh, like the sea level like you, you asked me because uh, if you can see in the, in the ocean, it's a lot of changing. So we're talking about uh, we're talking to the family that live near the ocean. Right now they need to prepare to move away from the ocean. That must be very difficult to as the mayor to ask the families it's very to difficult move. very difficult all, all i'm all i'm doing is just to ask them uh, try to help them protect their their lives in case of the tsunami even the stream people that live next to the stream i already talked to them you know because the, when a tsunami occurs the stream always the, the first way for the for the tsunami to come in is the stream long time ago the stream used to be small but now they're getting wider and wider and wider. Do you know why? I think because of, I think the people, they cut down trees in the back. That's when, because uh, the tree helped to hold the water. And now it's, it's getting rougher and rougher every time there is rain. That's why the stream's getting wider and wider. Uh -huh. So that we talk about that in the village meeting too, to make sure don't cut the trees that are next to the stream, go further down and on inland, but not the one in, next to the stream. So understanding that the things that we do on the land are also affecting affecting the, the ocean, because if when it rains a lot, all this brown colored water, you should see the ocean. <laughs> you don't see no blue, all but this brown <laughs> and a lot of trash. What have you noticed over your life? The changes. When I was yeah, when I was a little, right now it's, it's a, there's a lot of big changes. Because when I was little, this village used to be beautiful. A lot of coconut trees near the ocean, a lot of sand. You hardly see any rock, <laughs> just sand when I was little. But now, 
You see a lot of rocks in the ocean. Hardly any fish. Because I, well, I used to go fishing. I used to catch a lot of fish. But now, I only got a few. Besides fish, we have octopus. And we have this small fish, uh, we call it um, Iasinga. It's a small fish, it comes every year. Not every month, but you know, once, twice in a, uh, every year. Uh -huh. We call it Iasinga. And even palolo, I, I heard you heard about palolo. The worms. The worms, yes. yeah. We used to uh, catch palolo like in October and November every year. But not anymore. Well, it's, it's declining. We, we still catch palolo, but not used to be. Back then, we used to fill buckets with palolo. Back now, only a half bucket because of the climate change, because uh, there was no uh, coral for the palolo. We don't fish for commercial. Oh, really? No, we, we depend on the ocean to, for our livelihood. So fishing is like a every, everyday thing, you know. I, I'd rather eat fish every day than any other thing. <laughs> no. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather eat fish, all, you know. Well, then with everybody wanting to eat fish, how do you avoid overfishing? Not everybody go to fish. Not everybody is a fisherman. It's only like a, a few, a couple of uh, people from the village. So when that, when that, when the guy go to fish and he get plenty of fish, so he can give it to the because all the people in the village is like a family. So he give it to the other family, give it to the salmon family. But if you think you went to selling fish, that would change. It's, things. A, it's against my village. We don't sell. If we, if I find somebody that come fishing and go to sell, I will find him. And that is what part of what helps you to um, keep your fish population healthy. That's right. We uh, eliminate those. And plus, uh, there's a lot of people from other villages used to come and fish in my village. And I, I didn't stop that, you know, because, you know, I, I'd rather help those people, especially the people that don't have ocean, because oh. we have villages that don't have ocean, because they're on top of the mountain. Those kind of people, you know, I, I just give them the chance to go fishing. But no more. Not no more. Now the village council steps in and say, no, I'm not gonna do that anymore. So you've both cut down on who can fish in your village and the ways that people are allowed to fish. That's right. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. Welcome back to Voice of the Sea. We are attending a meeting about reef education and climate change with local and NOAA scientists in Amoli Village. The entire village, from children to adults, participated in the meeting to learn and discuss how the changing environment is affecting their way of life. Well, uh, our top in any other name for our presentation, so our Manatua Isle Tele of Facilis, our Maya Tato for Amoy Moiles, our Mataina Lua for Sutas. Now, Mataina for is a presentation for a pair in a Yamala Maila of Fiamala Fianga, PSA will find any Plo Kalama Awale Neta Yala. Of time Ravanoa, Long O, Shonel Amun Junior, Fingalwingam Tanga Wing Alaman, we are Sami Mervam Matua of a Palangir Department of Marine and Wildlife. Talia to Pen Facilia Tamalia. Ole awala e faiti tiel fatama iyo awamu ole tafiri ole savali lungo awamu 
Leo ye to la fun of a sion to fang a fang here. It's on a fallip of a pair of so fiver. We see a wall only some file of water tip in a la out, lang out, a la with a fillet a timu. It's our fillet a la out, you'll award the palapala. I want it tough to fear. I want it tough to some. Or they see there, tell you of city to ma. Or if I let's say, not a fall of a sow or of a palangal marine protected area. What are some benefits that we're going to get from these programs, Marine Protected Area? Le mer ngata e fale fasa o tsam fale fasa a o amu e le ngata a o amu a o ia ma me o tonu fia me o tonu sami fasa o na ve se ina le o neone fasa o na fa ngota o tali u malavana le fe me tsam alea. So the smaller the uh, small fish we produce only once a year. The bigger fish we produce four to five times a year. I'm gonna set uh, an example up here. Or example, fate ta inga o le laya la titi a tu fu la laya la titi. Ela iti e mo ma yai. Ole la ya la po as fa te te inga. A tu fu la ya la po as ita tu fa te jali as ita tu fu ita tu la ya la po. Ole se se ngan ne ole ngan ne ole la po. A tu fu la ya la iti te la iti la e mo ma yai ma yai. A tu fu la ya la po as ita le e mo ma yai. Ole ya la iti te tu fu fa te. Ole ya la po as tu fu fa fa ile fa li ma te usanga ole ngan ne ole ole ya la po. Or if you are a man, it are a man, you 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 it's too late for us to do. There's no remedy right now. It's out of control. Play a killing. A local community will level themselves. We will live and calm the height. It's already contaminated. Well, Better let me feel La uya fa kwanga aile ya feo lolo aile lolo ese ese ngole ya feo lolo mali ya kele mali ya kiki ol five wa ol tau time mata poto la fa ya elon ma fa fa u ito ngai ya pe a le five five ta ba they have brief assessments. Eola to a tofu, a snorkel. Oloba vaiela to too long on the day of the Okay, healthy reefs, meaning more fish. Not healthy reefs, we get to the nia. Olo eva bongo, fajete ima. Olo zele too long on the day of 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 the um, I'll just uh, reintroduce myself. My name is uh, Trevor Kaitu. Um, I work for the um, Coral Reef Advisory Group, and I function as the uh, Education and uh, Outreach Coordinator for the Coral Reef uh, Advisory Group. Coral reefs, we have three different type of uh, reefs. Number one is uh, fringing reef. Number two, we have uh, barrier reef. And number three is Atola. What is a coral polyp? Now, this uh, picture here refers to only like one. You, you just have one polyp 
right? If you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, polyps uh, put together, you have a coral colony. Coral feed in two different ways. Number one, they use the algae, the algae, the algae in their body, and then number two is they use uh, tentacles. During the day, they retreat all the tentacles, and then they uh, make use of the azuzentali uh, to catch uh, sunlight and produce the, the, the food. Huh? And then during nighttime, you will see they will uh, protrude out all their tentacles and then just wait for all the plantains and whatever swim by, they always uh, catch as their, their food. Coral reef, they provide uh, homes and shelter for a lot of uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, organisms. Huh? You can see um, some of these uh, pictures up here. All of these uh, creatures, they depend on coral reef for shelter and for food. Thanks for watching Voice of the Sea. Turn your love of the ocean into a lifelong career. Join NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as we unlock the secrets in the deep oceans, track rapidly moving storms, model climate trends, protect and preserve our marine resources, and so much more. It's all in a day's work at NOAA. Find a career that makes a world of difference, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship. NOAA. University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii Sea Grant. The National Tropical Botanical Garden, enriching life for all of us through discovery, scientific research, conservation, and cultural education. How's it, everybody? I'm Ama. Aloha and welcome. Professor Iwaki and I would like to thank you for helping us keep our ocean clean. <gasps> E ma lama i kamoana, care for our ocean. This message is brought to you by the National Tropical Botanical Garden. Healthy oceans are critical to our cultural, economic, and environmental sustainability in Hawaii. The ocean serves as a source of water, food, medicine, jobs, transportation, recreation, and energy. It controls climate and weather. Kosi Island Earth aims to share this ocean awareness by partnering with local scientists and educators to engage communities and schools in active science learning for an ocean literate population. COSI Island Earth is working to establish new avenues for connecting research scientists with educators and communities. COSI Island Earth is enhancing the science and ocean literacy of our island residents and visitors. COSI Island Earth is connecting scientific research traditional knowledge and ocean policy. COSI Island Earth, bringing together university, government, research, and community partners to improve science education and ocean stewardship in Hawaii.